Move over, Joe Exotic. Britain's got its very own Lion King. Over the years, Reese Oliver has acquired an eclectic mix of animals, including uh, two African lions, a Canadian puma, 27 monkeys and two wallabies, all in the back garden of his Nottingham home. And Reese plans to extend his enclosures in spite of backlash from worried neighbours. And he joins us now, along with his pride of big cats. Good morning, Reese. Nice to meet you. So just explain who you've got in the background there with you so we know what we're looking at. Yeah, behind me I've got uh, Rocky and Rora, two two-year-old African lions. Wow, OK. Um, which I've rescued from... Uh, a... yep. Go on. Go on. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> which I rescued from uh, some bad conditions in, uh, in Eastern Europe um, when they were cubs. So, yeah, and I brought them back here to, uh, to Sorelli. So how does a pro show jumper end up with lions in his garden? Well, um, a while ago, I was working uh, away in a, in a stable and they had, a, they had some uh, big cats and I sort of grown, got experience and, and learned how to look after them and learned the ropes there. And then I ended up rescuing two squirrel monkeys from, uh, from, a, from, from a lady who was terminally ill. And from there, then I got um, a puma. Um, somebody had uh, obviously acquired it illegally uh, and kept it as a, as a, tried to keep it as a pet and um, somebody approached me to, to rescue him, so I rescued him, and then the lions came on. And uh, I had a phone call, basically said, can you uh, come and grab the lions? You've got long to get them because uh, they would be euthanised, and that's basically how it went. So I'm just looking at the enclosure around you, and obviously a big cat like that needs an awful lot of space. So, so you know, uh, security-wise as well, that's hugely important here. So just explain the enclosure. Yeah, so at the moment we've got the original enclosure which we built for them um, when they were cubs. Um, and uh, we're just now, we've just got permission to, to expand it uh, sort of five or six times the size of what, uh, I think even ten times the size of what it is now, um, with much more uh, enrichment activities. Um, and we're always like upgrading the security and, and upgrading the conditions to make it the best, you know, completely the best for them. Um, we've got laser surroundings to stop people from, you know, intruders coming in, and we also have you know, great um, sort of alarm systems and tracker systems that are able for us to make sure the cats don't escape. So, yeah, it's really, you know, we're always trying to improve the facilities to make it the best for them. So, uh, um, you've got neighbours. I mean, I, I used to live near uh, Regent's yeah. Park Zoo when I was sort of 17, 18, and, uh, and they, the lions were amazing on a, on, a, on a weekend morning. You could open the doors and hear the lions roaring. Do they, do they roar? Do they make a noise? What do the neighbours think? Uh, they don't. Sometimes about sort of seven in the morning, they, 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 you can hear them um, calling, for each, calling to each other. Um, but, yeah, they're quite, they're quite placid, quite animals. They're very lazy animals. Um, we, 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 in the morning, we, um, we do a perimeter check of the whole enclosure to make sure that everything is really sort of uh, secure, and then we let them out. So, I mean, I can imagine that the neighbours are actually thrilled that you do a perimeter check <laughs> just to make sure you've, you've still got them. Um, but, uh, but and obviously, with, uh, <laughs> with the, uh, the fact that you're keeping these um, wild animals, or many people would say that they should be wild, yeah. um, that <gasps> you say you rescue... Here he comes. Incoming. Here he comes. Hello. <laughs> I think it's... Yeah, are they are they easy to keep as pets? I mean, nobody should be keeping these animals as pets, surely. But I was quite shocked. The Born Free Foundation found nearly five thousand wild animals officially classed as dangerous, um, uh, dangerous, living in private homes across the UK. Five thousand wild animals. I mean, that seemed extraordinarily high. Just how easy is it? Too easy to get your hands on animals like this to keep them? No, it's not. It's not. It's not an easy process. And and like these aren't my pets. They're they're a lifelong commitment, and I would never say that you know anybody should 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 get these animals and have them as pets because, you know, they really take everything out of your life. There's no last-minute holidays. There's no just going out for dinner. You have to be checking the cameras. You've got to really. It's really something which is for the for the rest of their life, for yourself, for you know, yeah. for us. And you you have rescued them. These those lions would be dead uh, if it wasn't for you. Uh, we know that, as you say, you rescued them. Yeah. They were in very, very bad nick from a Romanian circus. Uh, Rora, the female, had a liver condition for which now she is on lifelong medication. So you've saved their lives. 
Yeah, um, Rora, she got her condition. She went really downhill, which is the lioness. Um, the vets advised that there was nothing that we could do. She lost her sight, um, but it wasn't good enough for me. I, I kept finding, I, I said, I'm not going to euthanize her like, like they advised. I'm going to find a solution. I'm going to find a thing. So I spoke to different specialists. We found a treatment that worked for her, and she just literally turned around, and she's never been better, really. Mm. Um, have you had any near misses? I mean, obviously, they're dangerous animals. Have you ever got too close? No, we have a really good um, procedure. We, 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 we train with pr uh, much protective contact as possible. We have really good risk assessments and protocols in place to make it safe for the animals and safe for us. Mm. Um, so, what about when it comes to um, Instagram or... I mean, you're not a zoo, you're not open to the public, I mean, you're doing this to save them and to look after them. Um, but, uh, Peter, the... Um, people for the ethical treatment of animals say private owners uh, often fuel the captive wildlife crisis by displaying wild animals in unnatural conditions flaunting selfies and bottle feeding on social media these irresponsible behaviors perpetuate the damage and damaged in the myth that these animals make good pets what what do you say to them yeah like i say they're not pets they're not something which um you know you keep in your house you know, there is other countries um, that, that there, you know, the laws are, are a lot more relaxed and people do do that. But, you know, cuddling, uh, you know, you know I, I've made mistakes in the past where I have taken, you know, selfies with them. And, and that's not something which I like to actively practice. And I think it's, it's, it needs to be from the, from the Tiger King, uh, you know, that was on Netflix. I think people need to take a look that there is people who do this badly and there's people who do this in a really good way. And I think that's in every aspect of keeping animals. You know, dogs, there's people who keep dogs in bad conditions and there's people who keep them really well. So I think you kind of have to make your own view and not just, you know, tar everybody with the same brush. And so the rest of your day, how much... I mean, you imagine you're walking around feeding all these animals all day long. How much do they eat, these lions? Um, they, 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 we, 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 we have, like, starve days, so we try and keep the diet similar to how they were in the wild. Um, but they, they, they have a fair amount of kilo of cow and, and different other sort of, like, deer and other sorts of... Uh, and boar. Uh, and, and, and we try and mix it up and keep it so they, they've got a variety. And you also keep them entertained as well. You keep their senses active. Yeah, we do. We, we hide the food. We, we put them in boxes. We have sensory enrichment. We have other, loads of different times of enrichment. And we have an enrichment plan which we stick to every week and we change it up. And we really, you know, it's a really full-time job. And the other thing I would say about the animal rights organisations is the Dangerous Wild Animal Act has been around for half a century. There's been no real serious death or, or there's no death or any serious real injury with that lice, uh, you know, from that legislation, which actually probably makes it one of the best legislations yeah. Yeah. in legislation history. It's an Reece, important thank point you. to make, Reese, and we very much appreciate you talking to us today. Thank you.